Dave. Where's Chris? I don't know. Is he out the front? I can't see him. Right. Uh, Dave. Gary. Here's a list. All the things you have to remember. As if we need a list. I don't care. We should know by now. <laughs> what time is it? It's five past. What time have we got to be at the airport? Not till 2.15. I have plenty of time. Now, please. I want to explain. I'll get it. Okay. Now, Mrs. Frenchman has offered to iron all your shirts for the week. Actually, I think you'll find I've left you enough. Yes? Who's that? We'll be right. I'm sure you will. Oh, I understand. No, we're just about to. It's not as if we haven't cut our own before. I think we all are. This time it's different. I've never left you for a whole week before. Mike, is that Elizabeth? Yes, she wants to know if we've left or not. Don't either of you move. Wouldn't dream of it. Do you want to speak to her? Of course I want to speak to her. Mum, you're quite sure you haven't forgotten anything. No, Mike. Why do you keep asking me that? Nothing. Elizabeth? Hello. I knew it would be you. Garbage Monday and Thursdays, if we don't know. Yes, that's right. Oh, as I told you, apparently it won't mean moving to Melbourne. I can be treated here. Yes. I remember you told me the other night. Oh, there you are. Are they already? Yeah, Mum's just on the phone to Miss Dean. Oh, well, that's a finish. Look, have you seen my car keys? They're on the sideboard. Oh, so they are. Well, what about you? Are you ready? I've just got to get my jump on. Well, away you go. I'll see you at the front. I'll just round the others up. Chris? What is it, Tiger? Well, come on, come on. Has Mum said anything to you about this week? About what? What do you mean? Well, anything special about this week. Special? Well, I don't know. Apart from your mother going to Melbourne, I guess that's pretty special. That's just another week as far as I'm concerned. Why, have I forgotten something? No. Nothing, I guess. Well, get your jumper. And don't be long. I've forgotten my birthday. I'm ten years old on Thursday, and they've all forgotten. Even my own mother. Friday, Mr. Thompson will deliver the groceries. Everything's ordered. All you have to do is collect the meat. On Saturday, you can have a casserole. I thought that would be easiest. Then... Water, water the plants and don't forget to depress the chicken for Sunday. <laughs> Aren't you good? And on Sunday night, I'll be home. I hope so. Don't fancy our cooking. Can we go now? I hate to mention this, but planes don't wait for people. I've been ready for hours. Well, come on then. Let's go. I'll open the boot. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed for me. Perhaps the specialist in Melbourne knows something the others don't. Come on. No. Uh, have I forgotten anything? Uh, no. I don't believe I have. Early morning, sleepy on, and wake up with the sun in my eyes. And face another day. Yesterday I thought the rain would tumble down and blot out the skies But still it brought to me The Godfather's a change in my world The Godfather's bringing me the Telling me the word For such a good life Everybody else has one I tell my troubles to three Is there okay. anything important? All right. I think I can spare you a minute. You sure? Yes. You're beautiful. Mm, compliments and so early in the morning. I thought you might like to hear about our night. Ah, that I'll make time for. 
I was thinking about you all last night and wondering how you were coping. Look, if I hadn't had to go to that meeting, I'd have come over. But, oh, it went on and on and got too late to even phone. I don't know how we're going to be able to stand it for a whole week. At least we're going to Miss Maria, I can tell you. You wouldn't believe dinner. Chris cooked it. Omelettes. Oh, what kind of omelettes? We're still not sure. <laughs> Dave broke two plates, two of the good ones, when he was washing up. Oh, then we had an argument about what program we were going to watch on television. We ended up not watching anything. I see. Something's bugging Mike, so he went to bed. Dave locked himself in his room with his typewriter and Chris fell asleep in the bath and nearly drowned. Oh, what about you? Oh, I just sat about being miserable. Well, how was breakfast this morning? Oh, that was me. Mm -hmm. How was it? Oh, not too good. I'm not much of a cook. And Mike still looks as though he's, he's going to his best mate's funeral. Well, I think I'd better come round tonight and cook you all dinner. It all sounds very heavy. I knew you'd take pity on us. You are beautiful. So you've already told me. Well, what time will we see you? Oh, I'll come over straight from work. Great. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, hey, Liz. Mm hmm Thanks. <laughs> What is it? Something. What? Of cooking. The answer's dinner. No, no, don't put it there. Look, put it over here. Oh, look, the sink will do. No, I want to use the sink. Oh, please, before I end up with a galloping hernia. <laughs> there. Oh, must be getting old. What's in there? Oh, just some soft drink. Yeah, I'll bet. You do know that beer makes you fat. I'll risk it. Whoops. Here. Mm. Thanks. Oh, this looks very nice. I heard about the omelettes. Please. Who's home? Mike, he's having a bath. Chris. Before she left, did Maria say anything to you about there being something special about this week? No, but Mike said something like that before we drove Maria to the airport yesterday. It's his birthday on Thursday, that's why. And he's convinced everyone's forgotten about it. It's so awful. I think everyone has. His birthday? You're sure his birthday is the first? Thursday is the first. With all this Melbourne business, I think even Maria's forgotten. Are you positive she didn't say anything to anyone? I know she didn't say anything to me. Well, of course they am. That subject never came up. The first, of course it's the first. Oh, the poor kid, that's what's wrong with him. I said he was a bit depressed because Maria had gone to Melbourne for the week. Well, we'll have to do something about it. And I guess we should drop Maria a line too. I've been thinking about that. I think we should send her a telegram before she comes back at the weekend. She's got so much on her mind. You know what she's like about birthdays. If we remind her now, she's just as likely to fly back before next Thursday. Could be. As long as she knows before she leaves, she'll have time to get Mike something. I really don't think we should worry her. This week's terribly important to her. Yeah, I guess so. But I know she'd hate everyone to think she'd forgotten Mike's birthday. Oh, Chris. I don't know what we should do. What do you think? I don't know. Look, I've talked to you about it after dinner. All right. But Liz, not a word to Gary or Dave. Why? Well, not yet. I want to think it out first. That shabby old cabbie who goes through the park, plodding along in the dark. And he says giddy giddy up to his horsey. He says giddy giddy up to his horsey. Oh, you know it, you must. Never heard it before in my life, mate. I vaguely remember. Sorry, Dave, before my time. You sure you got the tune right? Your voice is of course the best. I now. have. Anyway, my father used to sing it all the time. So did Mum. It was their song. It's very nice, Dave. Well, when I first heard it, I was two. So don't tell me it's not possible to remember things that young. All right, all right. Oh, we do get upset, don't we? Eat your dinner. Get you, get you, come on. Give us well, some. Well, away. That'll be enough, Dave. Come on, eat. Sorry, Lisa. It's beautiful. Good. Yes, it is. A bit of a change from last night. In great. Uh, I appreciated it. Just my stomach didn't. You do look sad. Don't be depressed, Mike. Whatever it is, it isn't half as bad as you think. That's right, Tiger. In fact, very often, things have a way of turning out very differently from the way you'd expect. I'm all right. Of course you are. Good, I'm pleased to hear it. I'll tell you something else about that song. On my fourth birthday, my father sang it at my birthday party. I just remembered that. Yeah? Well, you must remember, Chris. It's called Shabby Old Cabby. Anything for a better piece. Let's have it again. Mr. Edmund, I've excused. I've finished. Of course. Where you go? I can't guarantee anything, mind you. I still think it's before my time. It was not. Now, you're right. I'll sing it again. I'll take it a bit slower. 
that shabby old cabby who goes through the park, plodding along in the dark. Dave, here for a minute. I want to talk to you. It just suddenly hit me while I was sitting there. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. It's the first. That's this Thursday coming. Three days. But Gary, Maria, I wouldn't have forgotten. I tell you, she must have. All this business about having to fly down and see this new specialist in Melbourne must have just slipped to mind. Chris, too. I mean, it was only just because you happened to mention the word birthday at the table that I remembered. No wonder he's been so quiet. Birthdays are pretty important when you're about to turn ten. Are they ever? Well, what do we do? I can arrange to take Thursday afternoon off. It shouldn't be a problem. Then I can buy some of the things on Wednesday at lunchtime. And anything I've forgotten, I can pick up on Thursday. Well, I can arrange a cake. What sort do you think I should get? Oh, something with a lot of cream. Kids love things that aren't good for them. <laughs> you're getting very tolerant in your old age. <laughs> oh, be quiet. Oh, remember. Mm. Not a word to Gary or Dave. We just let them think that Maria arranged all this before she left. Well, when do we tell them? They'll need time to buy Mike's birthday present. Oh, Wednesday will do. That gives us time to organise things in the meantime. Right. Well, that's party number one on Thursday, when there'll be just all of us. Mm -hmm. And then on Saturday, we have party number two and invite all Mike's friends. <laughs> Sounds like quite a week. <laughs> but, Chris, Thursday being just the family, don't you think we should keep the cake until Saturday? No. Oh. Oh, we'll get him two cakes. Why not? Not ten every day of your life? So we go ahead and organise everything for Thursday night. We, we can't ask all the kids then because it's the middle of the school week. So we'll have a proper party on Saturday. Thursday's just family. So will we get one cake or two? Oh, two. Oh, I suppose so. Don't you think we should say something to Liz and Chris, though? Seems a bit lousy not to. I told you. We tell them on Wednesday night. But we go ahead and organise everything. We can tell them on Wednesday that Maria fixed it all up before she left. Oh, well, I'll say we forgot to mention it. It'll be a surprise. OK. Oh, stop worrying, Dave. Everything's going to go like clockwork. Mike! Do you want me, Chris? On the phone. Sounds like Butch Buckley. Oh, OK. Mike? Me. I can only be a sec. I'm in the phone box. And there's this old duck outside looking daggers at me. Are you alone? Um, no, I'm not. Listen, I talked to me old lady. I told about your old lady and your godfather's forgetting it was your birthday. She wants to know, do you want to have two here Thursday? We're going to give you a surprise party. Really? Sure. She says she can understand your old lady forgetting because she's in Melbourne soon that quack. But she says your godfathers, well, they're a lousy old mob. No, they're not. It's not their fault. It was just a misunderstanding. Anyway, do you want her? My old lady's going to make a cake and everything. It'll be a really good night. OK, I'll tell her. See you at school tomorrow. OK, thanks, Butch. See ya. What did Butch want? Nothing important. rang me a few minutes ago. Pixie. My dear, wait till I tell you. Hmm? Oh. I'm just having some afternoon tea. A couple of dry biscuits, that's all. You know when I'm on a diet, I've got a will of iron. Anyway, Pixie went up the street and she bumped into Butch Buckley's mother. You know. Anyway, tomorrow apparently, it's young Mike Varga's birthday and she's giving a surprise party for him at their place. Because those godfathers of his, and even his own mother, have forgotten all about it. Really. I love you, man. You do realize this is heavy. 
Well, you don't expect me to carry it. I stayed in back the other day carrying all that beer. You'd better check and see where Mike is. Well, he's all right. He's probably in his room. But where can you hide this? Gary and Dave will be home any minute. In my room on the wardrobe. Now, what have we got? Everything's there. Balloons? Balloons, paper hats, fruits, nuts, sweets, jellies will all be violently ill. <laughs> You're a marvel. <laughs> oh, I went to the Buckley's this morning on the way to work. I met young Butch just coming up the front gate. Okay. He's a strange kid. <laughs> he looked at me as though I was trying to give him smallpox instead of an invitation. But it's all right. He's going to arrange to get all Mike's friends from school, and he promised he'll say nothing to anyone. Fine, it's all going to go very well. Daddy, how'd you get in here? Through the bathroom window. Don't talk so loud. It's not at all right. No one's here. Yes, sir. Chris and that tall bird just came in, the social worker. Listen, I just wanted to tell you, they haven't forgotten your birthday. They're having a party for you on Saturday. But you're not supposed to know. It's a surprise. How do you know? I know, but don't say nothing. And you better not tell them we're having a party for you. What'll I do? I'll get me old lady to phone tomorrow after we all get up to our joint. Then you just say, you're having tea with us. They won't mind. Then you'll have two birthday parties. I think I better tell them, No, Rich. you'll only hurt their feelings. What's that? Gary. I'll get out your window. See ya. <laughs> I knew I'd get caught. I wanted to get away before Gary and Dave Just help me get these things on top of the wardrobe. But I don't think I'm here to cook dinner. Aren't you? No. <laughs> All clear. Gary, I just don't get it. You mean none of his friends can come on Saturday? I told you, young Tony Smith's supposed to be one of Mike's best friends. I caught him on his way home from school. I asked him and he said they've all got something on. Said he couldn't tell me he'd been sworn to secrecy. He kept on giving me the weirdest looks too. All of them. Well, so I gather. Oh, it doesn't matter. So we don't have a party on Saturday. We just make sure that tomorrow night we make up for it. You know, I phoned Pete today to ask if he and Helen would like to come over tomorrow night. They're away in Queensland, not due back until the weekend. Oh, well. Oh, you're both home. Good. Look, there's something I want to tell you. G'day. We didn't know anyone was home. Hi, Chris. Hi, Liz. You're here again. It appears I'm cooking dinner. Oh, that'll be terrific. Mm. Something I want to talk to you about. Well, actually, we've got something I want to tell you as well. Well, I was going to wait till the morning, but Liz thinks I should tell you now. Anyway. You won't get mad, will you? What about? Well, actually, I was hoping you weren't going to get mad about what I'm going to tell you. Sounds fascinating. Who's going to go first? Why don't you tell us? That's what I'd like to know. Oh, come on. Why didn't you mention it to me? Oh, please don't start all that again. Yeah, come on. Anyway, I think we should all be ashamed of ourselves. It's all so simple. With all the stuff we've bought, we've got more than enough for two parties, tomorrow nights and Saturdays. After all, the whole idea is to make sure that Mike has a happy birthday, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Well, then, what's the problem? No wonder Terry Smith gave me such a funny look when I asked him about Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Mike. I'll see you tonight. See you, Dad. You don't look so sad. Most full of surprises sometimes, you know. See you tonight. Come in. Hello? This is Mike. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Mike, happy birthday to you. Who's that? Mrs. Chubb. You see, I knew it was your birthday. And I want you to call in and see me on your way home. I've got a little present for you. Thanks, Mrs. Chubb. Okay. Bye. Thanks again. Well, that's my good deed for the day. You right, Tiger? Yes, Chris. Who was that on the phone? Mrs. Chubb. What did she want? Nothing important. Okay, then, let's get you to school. Mm, that's what I call a really good afternoon's work. It looks terrific. I can't wait now to see his face. Dave, today is sports day, isn't it? This is the day he comes home late. Yeah, about five o'clock, usually. Well, what time do you make it? It's half past. He is a bit late. I'm beginning to get worried. I'll get it. Look what I've got. A cake? You too? Why didn't you tell me you were getting a cake? Because we never got round to discussing a cake, that's why. But I thought that you'd all forgotten it was Mike's birthday. I only got back a couple of hours ago, and there was an urgent message at the studio to phone Mrs. Judd. Well, I did, and she went on and on and on about poor Mike and how no one had remembered it was his birthday. So I bought a few things and came right over. Helen, come with you? No, she's staying on for a couple more days. So what's going on? We'll tell you later, Peter. 
Where's Mike? We're wondering the same thing. G'day. Oh, 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 well. How are you, Peter? We thought you weren't due back for the weekend. Oh, I got back a couple of hours ago and bought some things for Mike's birthday. Where is he? It's sports day. He's always late home on Thursdays. We all took the afternoon off so we'd have everything ready for when he gets here. Well, as usual, it's good to see your happy face. Uh, what's in the box? Which one? Oh, this cake. Oh, no. What's up? Uh, it's going to be quite a birthday. We've doubled up on just about everything and now we've got three birthday cakes. I think they're all beautiful. But which one do we stick the candle in? You can only have one birthday cake. Well, like ours, don't you, Dave? Yeah, I think ours has got something. Don't agree. Oh, I don't. Well, look, you sort it out, I'll answer the phone. What's wrong with ours? As cakes go, I do not find it attractive. It's ordinary, mate. What are you talking about, ordinary? He had it specially made. And I had mine specially made. Well, if you ask me, that's what's wrong with both of them. Hello, Mike. Ridiculous. Oh, Mrs. Buckley. Why don't we toss for it? Oh, yes, we are. We're getting quite worried. We've got a surprise birthday party waiting here for him. Now, look, look, I spent a fortune. You're not. Money. You don't think I'm going to let the mice have it? But <laughs> how? I don't understand. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Now, look, look at your cake. I mean, just look at it. I'm looking. Well, that's not even fresh cream. I mean, I can tell. Look. What do you think you're doing? Keep your fingers out of it. It's not. I told you. Oh, Pete. Oh, no. Oh, well, of course you did. You've ruined it. Now, look. Who's tasting it? Will you quit being so child? Oh, look, Mrs. Buckley, it's certainly not your fault. But Hold have on, they started to eat cake? yet? No, don't do that again. Oh, kids hate mock cream. Haven't they? Knock it off, Pete. I bet that's mock cream, too. Ah, don't please. you lay a finger on it. Now, look, I spent $4 on my cake and I refuse to waste it. I mean, look at that. You can't expect us to eat that. Oh, great. Do that again, I dare you. Does it really matter which cake we use? Awful. Absolutely awful. You've ruined it, haven't you? We couldn't use my cake now if we wanted to. Well, you shouldn't have dared me. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris. It does look a bit nasty, doesn't it? I'm sorry to have messed that up. Really, I am. True. Oh, it's not important. You prefer fresh cream, don't you? Well, I, you know, I think everyone does. Fine. <laughs> fresh enough for you? You'll never believe what's been going on. What's happened? I see it. But I refuse to comment. Looks like we use our cake. When you four grown men are through playing, I suggest you clean up here as fast as possible. We're about to be invaded by several adults and ten tall children. I'll explain later. We're giving a birthday party, remember? And it's all about to happen. Anybody got a match? Murder out there. I don't know how Mr. and Mrs. Buckley go. They have so much energy. We should think about sending the children home soon. It's getting dark out there. Oh, forget it. They don't seem worried. They've got school tomorrow. Don't know why it ever worried us. Will the mic get to? He's on the phone. Who to? Maria phoned to wish him happy birthday and to tell him that she'd left a present for him in her room. You see, we had nothing to worry about after all. We should have known. Yeah. I didn't really think you'd forgotten. I just thought it might have slipped your mind for a while. Okay. Will you be home on Sunday? Yes, I will. Remember this time last year? Oh, sure do. Been a good year, hasn't it? Yeah, just great. Why don't you have some cake? It was beautiful. Oh, don't. I feel dreadful. Do you? Mum says that this time next year she could be running around the backyard with everyone else having fun. <laughs> They're all smiling. Oh, it's been great, Mum. I think it's been the best birthday I've ever had in my whole life.